Climate change campaigners have expressed outrage at the appointment of the head of one of the world's biggest oil companies as president of this year's UN climate summit in the United Arab Emirates. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber, who heads Abu Dhabi's national oil company, is the nation's climate envoy. His office said he would play a central role in building consensus at the COP28 conference. The move comes amid controversy over the prominence of fossil fuel interests at climate talks. The recent COP27 gathering in Egypt was described by some attendees as a glorified fossil fuel trade show. Well, let's get more now on this appointment with our environment correspondent, Matt McGrath. Matt, welcome to you. Just explain who he is and the significance of his role. Well, Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber is a well and experienced climate envoy for the United Arab Emirates, but it's also the chief executive officer of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. And he's the first chief executive officer of such a company to be appointed as president of a climate talks uh, taking place this year. Now, the role of president is, is really critical in this. It needs to be seen as impartial. It needs to be seen as being able to bring sides together. We had Alex Sharma in the UK in Glasgow COP26. We had also in Egypt last year, the role was pretty critical in trying to get some agreement. So the fact that uh, Mr. Al Jaber is going to continue in his role as chief executive officer and not stand down as many people expected, I think will be a little bit divisive for many parties. Yeah, a lot of people say there's a huge conflict of interest here. Just take us through the criticism. Where is it coming from? Yeah, I think people need to understand that in a situation like this where science is saying that to keep the global temperature target of 1.5 degrees alive, rapid emissions cuts need to come in the next seven or eight years. And they need to come from oil and gas companies as well as from making of electricity. Now, the leading oil exporters and the leading gas exporters have all been slow to move on that. And at Sharm El Sheikh last uh, last November, they effectively blocked moves to phase down or to recognise the phasing down of these fossil fuels as quickly as possible. So that is the backdrop against uh, which uh, Sultan uh, Al Jaber will be t will be taking his role, and so he will be seen as being perhaps in the camp, if you like, of the petrol states, or at least associated with them, which brings up this question of how can he remain independent and impartial when his country is dedicated to producing five billion barrels of oil and gas by 2030. And as you said, he is also chair of the government-owned renewable energy company. And Saudi Arabia has been trying to do a lot, hasn't it, in the renewable energy stakes in the market? Yeah, I think the United Arab Emirates is, is a leader in this field in the Middle East. And, you know, uh, Sultan Al Jaber is certainly f at the forefront of that. As you say, he's been their climate envoy for the last two years, well respected. And I think many people see the United Arab Emirates as a model for countries in the Middle East, petrostates, if you like, to move away from their uh, fossil fuels. Uh, United Arab Emirates at the moment gets 30% of its GDP from oil. That's a lot less than it used to get 10 years ago. And they're investing heavily in renewables. So I think people will see his appointment as a nod towards that and see a, a path forward, perhaps. And he has, his appointment has been welcomed by a number of diplomats and, and other groups as well, including the former UK Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who says, you know, he's, he's perfectly capable of providing the kind of grounded leadership, the practical leadership that will make COP28 a success. OK, Matt, thank you very much for that. Well, I'm joined now by climate change professor Mark Matlin from the University College London, who attended COP27 in November last year. Welcome to you. Good to have you on the programme. What's your reaction to the appointment of this new head of COP28? I mean, I have to say I was deeply shocked because the president has to bring the world together in these meetings. And we've seen other meetings where people have really worked hard to try and get agreements and also get the reduction in the use of fossil fuels. You have to remember that what we're aiming for is zero fossil fuel use by 2050. So to have the CEO of a major oil company in charge of a COP meeting seems to be completely against the ethos of the meetings. But Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber has long warned of the dangers of climate change, hasn't he? And he does head up Mazda, the government owned renewable energy company. Well, this is where the contradiction comes in because the UEA are pushing ahead with renewable energy. They want to actually go as carbon neutral as quick as possible, but they're using profits from fossil fuel exports to do that. I also think that he would get a lot more credibility because of his background if he then stepped away from the oil company and said, I'm stepping down from being CEO, and then I can actually focus all my time on the presidency. Because what people don't seem to realize is 
it takes a huge amount of work over the 12 months to actually bring 196 countries together to actually get agreements. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that last year's COP27 in Egypt, which I understand you were at, was described by some as a glorified fossil fuel trade show with a big increase in delegates from the oil and gas industry. What impact did that have, do you think? So the problem there is that they are fully involved. They have been since Kyoto in 1997, where literally Texans with their big hats were walking around the climate conference. Now, they're now in business suits and they merge with everybody else. But the problem is that it's a contradiction because what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of fossil fuel we use. But they're there trying to actually promote fossil fuels. And so there is this constant tension. But the problem here was at Egypt was the lack of leadership, the lack of ambition, and frankly, the timing of the meeting worked against it. For COPs to work, you need them to be open, transparent, you need to have civil uh, society involved, you need the protests, you need politicians to be there and fully engaged. And you need a president who can map all of that and pull it all together on the final day so you get movement, you get bigger and better ambition every time.